Okay, guys, so for today's Busted Out, this is kind of how I start these series for the deconstructed card kits. I'm going to make a deconstructed card kit that's for slim lines, and um, if anything's available that I have, have links to, that would be in the description box, and those would be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you're purchased items through those links. So thank you guys for using those if possible. Sorry, my lighting keeps moving. <laughs> Rearrange something. Um, so, all right. I recently did a video, and I don't know if I released it today or yesterday or whenever, but um, using the We Are Memory Keepers envelope punch board to see if I can make some slim light envelopes, and those were like 4 by 8 and 5 eighths. Not the greatest envelope. I didn't really care for it. Um, I had mentioned that regular business size envelopes are something you can put a slim line in, and so I had these, but I couldn't, you know, they were over there, and I could see that they're four and an eighth by nine and a half. So this is a business size envelope, just your regular envelope you're going to find. I think those are probably from the Dollar Tree, maybe Walmart. Um, no, it is Dollar Tree. Oh, that's so cool, actually, because it's Mead, but it says they're distributed by um, the Dollar Tree at the bottom. I've never noticed that when it's an actual brand and then for the Dollar Tree. But anyway, so I pulled out one of my cards because this is the one I've been having here. This is how I make my slim lines. They're three and a half by eight and a half. That's what I consider a standard slim line. But you know, some companies do differently like that uh, Anagraf one you just saw. So if you look at this envelope, because we're going to do the math to make our actual binder, which of course I've already shown you guys and we've gone through, but this is like the five by seven one. So we're going to make a nice binder for it. The pocket pages so we can include all our goodies. Um, the card's going to start here with your card base and then just regular pieces of paper that can be backgrounds or mats, some um, cute or pretty matte dies, some smaller matte dies, like toppers, and then all the pretty stuff that you want to embellish with and you end up with an envelope at the end. So I think it's really fun. Love that one. Um, so that's what we're going to work on. But I haven't even done the math yet for the binder, so we'll talk about that in just a minute. So this guy is pretty small, right? I mean, this is this is a lot. And this is a, you know, a really chintzy kind of envelope. I like, obviously, a nicer envelope. I could bring some out of, like, the Diamond Press kits or, like, my Anna Griffin kits. But I think just to make it a little more standard, so if I give you guys the numbers, you can just use the numbers instead of having to make up your own. I'm going to use this business size envelope, okay? And... Um... Yeah, so like I said, what is it? Uh, they're four and an eighth by nine and a half. The eighth part is kind of a bummer, but I think we're just going to discount that and maybe do four and a quarter or something. But we are going to make it larger anyway so that these can go in and out a little bit smoother. The very first one I made, they were nice and tight, which I really like. The second one, they were a little too loose, but that's okay because they fit. And when the thing is closed up, nothing really slides out. Now, what I want to show you is that this also accommodates, like, the Anna Griffin size, because she does, I think, like, 4 by 9 I think, is what she typically goes for. Let me see. Uh, yeah, 4 by 9 So, I had to make this card base to work with this, but I think that's generally what she uses, 4 by 9 So, they fit in there. Obviously, if it's too thick, it's not going to fit real great. So, hopefully, the numbers I give you guys will still work for your Anna Griffin envelopes, if you're, that's what you're going for. So, we're going to base it off of a standard business size envelope. Now, uh, I went to look for paper, and uh, the last two that I've done are more like classic colors, kind of muted. I went with beige and I went with black with the other one, but the colors themselves are, you know, all kind of similar. So, for this one, I went and looked through a bunch of paper packs that I have here that are in a big tub that I need to... <laughs> I can't de-stash any more paper because I've already gotten rid of all the paper or de-stashed it. Um without, you know, even just keeping one pack for myself or whatever, if it was duplicates and things. So, uh, this is where I am. I just need to use it up at this point. But this was really pretty, I thought, because um, I don't know what I want to do with slim lines. A lot of times I don't want it too playful, um, which is fine if you want to make one that's more playful. I thought these papers were really pretty. They're going to make nice toppers, you know, and stuff like that. And it also has pieces that we can cut down if we wanted to pop them in there as like a little car, you know, topper for your um, card or whatever. So, I think I'm going to use this one uh, from Michael's older set. I don't know if they still have it, but that's where I got it originally. So I think this will be fun. Of course, a tons of dies, um, you know, just for my collection that I have, right? So we're going to be bringing those out. Now, um, oh, okay. Well, I have another note here from another time that I did something. I don't know what, but I am going to basically talk out what it is that we want to do. So to make a binder for this, um, the last time I made it so that it has space, like in the, what's this thing called? <laughs> in the, um, sorry, so like in the spine, I made this one to be a little bit bigger, but what happened is, 
I gave myself a half inch between here and the first page and then a quarter inch and a quarter inch and a half inch at the end but by the time I used 300 GSM paper by the time we'd made our spine and was you know we go up and down and glue it together up and down glue it together I lost like almost almost like a eighth of an inch or so maybe a little bit more uh, because of the width of this like the way it made things push out and do what it did so it still works really well as you can see it's really nice but it's not a half inch here right this is not a half inch this is still a quarter and still a quarter this is just a little bit less than half inch so um, if we want to think about that what I was thinking about this time around is making the spine first and then adding it to my book and then knowing how much spine I need to have right um, on the outer cover so hopefully that makes sense generally what I do is I leave myself an inch and for a book like the one we're making today for slimline, in my opinion, the way I make my slimlines um, is just like this. So there might be a background piece, maybe there's a topper piece, and then there's a smaller focal point. Um, in the other books I had background, big topper, another topper, and then all kinds of different things that go along with that. So I think in this book I'm only going to make two pages, so it's not going to have three pages worth of stuff. So I'm going to have matte layers, I'm going to have to big toppers, maybe some smaller ones and then things to decorate with and that's all I'm gonna do this time around so I'm only gonna use two actual pages plus I want half an inch at the beginning and half inch at the end if I can get it so that's still going to be half inch and half inch and a quarter inch in here so I need an inch and a quarter basically in my spine but I don't really know that because if I do the up and down and this sucks up some of my space it's gonna take away some so we can always start off with the binding edge the spine with the binding and then go from there so for right now I'm aiming for an inch and a quarter now the height so if our envelopes are nine and a half inches tall this is gonna be a tall book and kind of thin yeah it's nine and a half inches I think what I'm gonna do is do nine and three quarters I don't want it too much taller than this because the inserts are gonna be a lot smaller right I don't want too too much taller than this guy so let's say nine and three quarters which is still kind of tall but um, so let's just add our back and our front cover and nine and three quarters tall that doesn't have to change at all what we need to know now is the front and the back pages how wide we want them um, again this is four and an eighth of an inch four and a quarter oh goodness you guys I don't want to do four and a half I feel like that's really big but if I do four and three eighths I know those are annoying numbers but four and three eighths is more of what I want to do so it's going to be four and three eighths here and four and three eighths here so if you add these numbers all together again I might change it up if I do the spine first but I'm just we'll see okay so that's eight and six eighths which is eight and three quarters plus a quarter is seven I'm sorry is nine <laughs> plus one more is ten inches so ten inches right let's make sure we did that right six eighths eight and six eighths it's eight and three quarter plus a quarter it's nine ten yep so we legit need a piece of paper for the cover that's going to be ten inches we're going to score it at four and three eighths and then one and a quarter inches from there and that'll just make the front and the back real easy we need to make our spine the um, pieces that go up and down before i really commit to this and then our paper is going to be nine and three quarter inches tall so um well, for these numbers, you are going to need like a 12-inch piece of paper or whatever to make your cover. Uh, I think it's going to be really fun. It's going to be really tall and thin, so that'll be interesting. Um, as far as this, the spine, this is how I think about it. It's going to be 9 and 3 quarter inches tall, right? And sometimes I cut it a little bit shorter than that. That way it's not just sticking out completely at the top. I don't know if you can see. There's like a little bit of space at the top. Just so it's not like just right at that same edge. And we're going to need a piece that goes half an inch from here this gap this first gap here should be half an inch and then I'm gonna have it go up and down and that's what we glue together and I like those to be half inches too just to give it more umph so if we have half an inch here we have half an inch up half an inch back down we're gonna need a quarter inch here because I'm only doing that one page and just that one little gap you can do another half inch if you want it to be bigger it doesn't matter so a quarter inch gap right here half inch up half inch down so half and half and then another half inch gap at the end here so if you add all these things up we have two half inches that's half an inch plus one half an inch is one one and a half I'm gonna leave the quarter inch for later so one and a half two two and a half three and a quarter so we need a piece of paper that's oopsie I'm already getting something weird 
uh, three and a quarter inches by nine and three quarters. Okay, that's for our spine. Our pockets and all those kind of things, this is how I make this up. And I'm taking a moment right now because I don't think it's going to take me that long. Hopefully, <laughs> I said that last time and the video was longer than the first uh, time I did the A2 size. Here we go. Do you want these guys to be the same height as this? Uh, if you don't like the difference in height, see how this one's a little bit higher and this one's lower. I wasn't really planning on that. I didn't really care. So, you know, in this back one, it's totally different. Um, I just planned on how much height do I want on my pocket so that this stuff gets held in and looks decent, right? So like this thing, I would say I probably want my pocket to be maybe even six inches high. I think that'd be good. So if I have my pocket that's on the front and the back, they're going to be the same. Uh, six inches high. Uh, where how am I going to draw this? Okay. This is how I make up my pockets. For these guys, I like them to have like a quarter inch gusset. So the first time I did, I did eighth inch. So at this space, see how this pocket is thicker? There's a quarter inch right here. And then I have a half inch glue tab that you don't see because I covered it by this paper. So let's move these numbers somewhere else. So six inches tall. At the very base, we are going to need a dot, 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 quarter inch, right? That bottom quarter inch right here, this piece. And then the half inch glue tab. So from there we have a quarter inch and then we have a half inch glue tab, half inch. And we need it to be six inches tall. So we have six plus half and a quarter, that's six and three quarter inches tall. That pocket needs to be six and three quarter inches tall. For the pocket, the sides, we need it also the quarter inch, right? The gusset that we want to make. And then we need a half inch glue tab on both sides. So, oh, and this is the other thing. How wide do we want it to begin with, right? So if it was six inches tall and the book is four and three eighths, I want it four and three eighths inches wide. So from four and three eighths, we are going to add a quarter and a half. We're adding three quarters plus another three quarters for the other side, right? The same numbers. That's one and a half. So we're adding one and a half just in seam, right? <laughs> so if we want this to be four and three eighths right here. So let's do our math. So four and three eighths plus four and four eighths if you convert the one and a half inches. That's five and seven eighths. So we need it to be five and seven eighths inches wide. Five and seven eighths. You guys, I love math. And if I did this wrong, I would be surprised, but you never know. So that's why I do my math again. So here I'll, I would do that again be like, okay, four and four eighths, one and four eighths. That's five and seven eighths. Yeah, five and seven eighths. So those are our pockets. And then the only other thing that we need to think about, do you want belly bands again? Do you want just pockets? I think I want to stick with just pockets again. Um, I don't want them to be six inches high, honestly, because that... And then they don't all have to be the same height, right? <laughs> I did make them all the same height just to make it easy to talk about in the video. They're all the same height. But let's say this first page is matte layers. You can go a little higher. Maybe on this next page you want it to be a little bit lower because now you're adding in dies that might be cut a little bit smaller, right? Or maybe they're just as tall or here. You know, so you can think about that however you want to do it. I don't want them to be super tall. Um, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking like five inches tall. Five inches tall, at least on the ones that are going to hold the other stuff. So these are the flat pockets, okay? So the pocket we just discussed is the front and the back that's going to hold the cards and the envelopes themselves. These pockets that just hold stuff, I'm just going to write it somewhere else because now I don't have room. Because Well, you know what? Actually, I can just erase this. These are going to be real simple. All it is is going to be as high as you want plus, you know, the um, three-quarter, no, plus half an inch, sorry, for your glue tab on either way. So if I want it five inches tall, I also need to have a glue tab that's half an inch. So five and a half tall. And the width needs to be four and three-eighths plus half inch glue tab on one side, half inch glue tab on the other side. So that's five, a whole inch, right? So five and three eighths. So five and three eighths this way. Cause you're going to have a glue tab here. Well, I guess you should draw that anyway. Okay. And that's just that it, that's it. So if you want to do anything else, of course, you know, that's up to you, belly bands, little pockets, whatever it is that you want, but this is a very basic, Thing. What I'm going to do is start with the spine just to know if I need to adjust this spine at all because that's what happened last time, right? Like I said, I ended up having to chop a little bit off the spine piece, which I didn't want to do initially, but that's what ended up happening. So, um, 
I am going to grab some paper that is nine and three quarters by three and a quarter that coordinates with my paper pack and I'll be right back guys. So it's getting kind of windy, it's rainy, you might hear. <laughs> I always say you might hear something but um, the palms are scraping my window. And it sounds just a little freaky. Okay, first the little snag is that I went to look at, you know, I have a lot of 12 by 12 papers but not a lot of plain cardstock ones, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so whenever I make the covers I usually like to stick to whatever color is on the front, on the inside, you know, the pockets, everything's the same. So I have this really pretty paper from um, Hobby Lobby, uh, the heavyweight cardstock. Again, this stuff is super thick. It's like 300 GSM or 110 pound or whatever. Same that I used in here where it kind of took away a lot of space because of the paper thickness when we made the spine. So that's why I'm starting with the spine. I did bring out some close to my heart paper so I thought, okay, I can make the cover out of this but then add this. But I don't like the two different colors. But if you don't mind, then do that. I'm just going to piece together my cover, I guess, from pink pieces of the A2 size paper which is eight and a half by 11 because that's I have plenty of this stuff and I have more I just pulled out some it's in my hand but um, I have more to do so we're gonna start with the spine just to know if it is going to be one and a quarter inch spine or maybe once I do the ups and downs maybe it's you know one and three eighths or something you know we don't know we don't know what it's gonna add to that so I'm gonna leave it there um, and all we're going to do is the scoring, like we had said. So this is the spine. It's three and a quarter inches wide, and it's really long at nine and three quarters, which is really weird. Um, and I'm going to score the first score is a half an inch. because That's that first spacing that we want between our cover and the first page. And I'm going to score another half inch, which is one inch, for the up of the spine uh, of the little tab. And then another half inch, which is creating the back down part right so we're gonna go up and then down and then from there I only want a quarter inch separation between the two pages so from here we did half inch one inch one and a half we're gonna do one and three quarters which is a quarter inch from that last one and then we're gonna do half inches again which at this point is two and a quarter so half inch from there is two and a quarter and then just a half inch from the end which again at this point is um, oopsie, there we go. <laughs> Two and three quarters, guys. If you're actually going by the numbers. Just a half inch from the other end. Here's my postman, I hope, so I don't want to pause. Yeah, he just left. Okay, so um, how do we want to fold this? So we have all our lines. Again, these first are going to make a space plus a glue tab. So I'm going to fold it back on the one inch score line. And I'm going to score it as well as I can. And then this one is going to, the very first, the half inch, is going to fold out flat. Because we are going to, that is what's going to actually glue to our spine. And this, the one and a half inch line, is going to go back up. Because essentially we're going to glue this together right here. So we want that half inch and half inch back down. And I show it in different angles just so that people can see exactly what's going on. I do recommend really, really scoring these things, and even when we do this, when we glue it down, make sure you're going back and forth with it so that it's ready to move as you go through your pages, right? We have that quarter inch gusset, because I'm only doing two pages this time, only one quarter inch space, and then we have the half inch and half inch, right? So again, we'll do the same thing. At the inch on this other side, I'm going to fold it back, just because that's easy for me. And then that half inch at the end, we're going to fold it forward. So I'm not even messing with that quarter inch, I'm just using the half inch markings. And that quarter inch will do its own thing. Right? So it looks like this. Half inch space that we're going to glue together, half inch space that we're going to glue together. So it's like this. And that is it. And that's my spine. It should be one and a quarter, but you know, when I glued together last time, it was not. So we're just doing this first just to get it. And it looks like one and a quarter. So that's not bad. We will see. Okay, so in here, again, as always, putting glue and being generous with it because we really want these to hold together, especially at the very end. And actually, I forgot to cut this a little bit shorter. I did leave it the whole nine and three quarter inches. I'd like it to cut it a little bit shorter normally, but that's okay. So I'm just gluing those two. I'm going to hold them together until it's nice and sturdy. And then I'm going to piece together 
my front and back cover only because like I said I don't have enough 12 by 12 pages to just keep making the book out of that same paper so we'll talk about that in a minute and the reason again I'm doing this first is because last time it totally took up a lot of space and last time I did have more pages more tabs so that obviously pushes out more and makes more of a problem this time around it seems like it's okay it's behaving but this is good that we're doing this first that way we don't have to cut it down later we'll just know if we're good or not so I'm going to continue holding these pieces so that they're glued and it looks like this and this is what is going to touch the actual spine of your book okay our binding all right I'm going to keep these together and I will be right back okay so I am glad that I did this first before we just went ahead and cut our spine and everything because now when I measure this if I lay it out flat like this it's actually it actually is one and three eighths instead of just one and a quarter now that means you can cut away from here but if you cut away from here you're cutting away into your half inch space that you wanted right so for me I rather just make the adjustment in the um what's funny about this is that I can't get that close like I don't have the little marks like I used to the smaller quarter inch lines but if you put this against your um, your guide or the ruler, it is legit one and three eighths, exactly one and three eighths. So um, my spine is going to be one and three eighths instead of just the one and a quarter. And that's because, again, when I created this, it, it opens up, right? Because <laughs> of this thickness, it pushes the spine out, um, those pieces. So knowing that, uh, instead of one and a quarter, I'm going to add another eighth of an inch. So ten and an eighth basically oops sorry guys I know it's like blown out so normally this would be 10 inches wide we're gonna do 10 and an eighth the other thing is <laughs> I don't have enough paper for it to be 10 and an eighth by nine and three quarters okay that's what you would want for your cover if you have lots of 12 by 12 and you're gonna do that 10 by nine and three quarters I'm gonna have to make this up so what's interesting is I can just cut this paper the one in um, that center spine I'll cut it the one and three eighths plus a half inch gusset on either side actually what I'm going to do because I don't want to double up my paper on the front covers you know how I, and this one I doubled up the papers if you watch the video it's holding on just like these pages are and like front and back like you know it's just doubled up I want to put a snap on this and I don't want it to be super super thick so to close this one up instead of using this stuff I'm gonna use a snap so I still want just one piece of paper so what I'm going to do is create the glue tab on my front and back covers and let that glue in behind here so that might sound a little bit confusing but it's not um, I will think about how I'm gonna cut that down and I will be right back but it's basically going to be the four and three eighths that I would need for the front cover and being nine and three quarter inches tall plus a half inch glue tab so that's all it is so it'll be four and seven eighths basically by nine and three quarters so four and seven eighths by nine and three quarters on these guys and I'll be right lost any you and I know most of you guys probably have a two size paper more of than 12 inch paper but again if you have a 12 inch paper and you're gonna keep using those for your pockets or you're gonna mix and match this outer one should be 10 by nine and three quarters or possibly 10 and an eighth depending on what happens with your spine right um, by the rest of it so what we have here is these two pieces like I said I'm gonna piece mine together so I needed paper that was four and seven eighths inches wide because I'm gonna have a half inch glue tab added to this by nine and three quarters so on this all I'm gonna do is score half an inch I don't really like this edge so I'm gonna score the half inch from this edge half inch we're gonna glue this to the spine plus the spine piece so I'm going to just divot it just a little bit so it looks nicer right there right there and let me see what this looks like do you guys like folding with the uh, score line or away from it <laughs> that is always my eternal question sometimes I fold it back on it sometimes I fold it forward so this is one of our pieces it's going to glue to this and then we're going to add just a spine okay so that's why I put the glue tab on this instead of having the glue tab on the outer spine going the other way because I don't want to double up my papers I'm gonna do the exact same thing with this one half inch and then divot out the edge and I'll be so right back funny. so I have this and as you're cutting your pieces like even this little piece almost made it so that it would fit on my spine but it's too short but I do have this piece that we cut off from you know cutting this down so I'm gonna cut this to one and three-eighths because that's how wide I need it to be by the um, 
nine and three quarter inches tall, which I think it's already because I cut it that way. So it's already nine and three quarter inches tall. I just need to do the one and three eighths. So let me cut that really quick. One and three eighths. Maybe a little shy of that. So not quite one and a half. And then we're just going to adhere these things. So this guy's going to be on the outside and then these guys are going to be on the inside. So again, I gave you guys the numbers several times <laughs> if you have one piece and I'm piecing this together. So having pieced this together, I needed my pieces to be uh, the numbers I already gave, which I already forgot. Let me see. Nine and three quarter inches tall by five, four and seven eighths. Four and seven eighths, nine and three quarter inches tall, half inch score. So we can glue these together. And to be honest, we can just put a ton of glue all over this and hopefully I don't make a big mess. But I probably will do one side then the other just to be able to focus. So I put the glue on this, but you can put it on the tab. And then we're gonna put this here. And give it a zhuzh. And then look at the front and the back just to make sure it looks nice. You know where you have it. Maybe the right amount up and down. If you don't like the look of this, you can add a little more and do a little, maybe a little um, on the edge punch or something if you want. For that guy. And then this guy, again, right to the edge. Oh, here's the other thing. Do we want to put a dangle on this? And do you want to do it like I did last time where I built in the little dangle spot? Of course, you can do that. Um, I didn't really plan for that today. This video is going to be long enough as it is. I think we talked a lot about numbers. <laughs> okay, again, just eyeballing that. That looks pretty good. Happy with that at. Oopsie. Actually, with this one, we can make the dangle right in the middle because we only have the one. So that is the center. So I don't have to uh, add it in like I did on the 5x7. touching okay I'm gonna take a moment just to make sure that's all really holding on and I'll be back you guys so that's what it looks like it has that and the inside not too bad and then I would pick whichever side I like better to be the front you know um, so now with this guy we're going to put tons of glue oh one more thing before I do that I like to also divot this out for the same reason I divot out that first one it just looks nicer so I'm just gonna go to the corner and cut away just that area that way later when we come in and put in our pages, it just kind of nestles in a little nicer. And you can also do that um, wherever you need to do something like that. When you want to ease something in, you can just give it a little cut. But okay, so this is going to be glue, 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 because I like to keep it nice and flat. I've done other times where I don't. I leave it so that it moves, like up and down, I don't know, so it flexes. But for now, I really need this to be right on. And I'm going to glue this right in. And as I do this, I want to make sure it's straight. <laughs> I want to make sure it's up and down. And we want to make sure that our hinges still close pretty well. Yeah, we're good. Okay, I'm going to continue massaging this. So I do that. I take a little zhuzh. I'll take this and push it in the center just to make sure that's really making good contact. I want the whole thing to really stick really well. And again, this time I forgot to do my little tip of cutting it a little bit shorter to begin with. So it's right at the edges. But if you want to, if you know, you can take your scissor later and trim that down. But it's pretty good. Okay, I'm going to let that set up and keep massaging it so I don't want it to come away. And I'll be back. Okay, guys, not going to lie, I forgot where we were. I think we are just finishing this up. I went to finish editing some other videos and things. Um, I love the way this feels when you have really heavyweight cardstock. And it's just, it just feels so nice. So, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is just make our insert pages. I think that's normally what I do. Is that what I do? I don't even know. Right now I'm just kind of like 
putting this together. <laughs> All right, so uh, I didn't talk about that, right? So we need to put pages here. And how I do mine is I have it go out and then back in, right? Um, so hopefully we have enough paper here to do that. That's the other thing. I might have to just put two pieces of paper together without folding it. I do like it folded, you know, down the center. But again, this is very tall and our paper is only so big unless you have 12 inch paper. So really, if you look at it, we need our pages to be nine and three quarter inches tall. And they need to be the four and three eighths times two, two. <laughs> so go up and back down, right? So that's eight and six eighths. So eight and three quarters, of course. And what is this? Eight and a half. Now I could really, if I wanted to, I guess I could just do eight and a half and forget about that extra quarter inch. You know what I'm saying? Let it be a little shorter. But do we want to do that? Ah, uh, whatever. I'll just make it two pieces of paper. What a bummer. Okay, so what we're gonna do is cut our paper to nine and three quarters and four and three eighths. So nine and three quarters, four and three eighths. I'm gonna need four pieces like that. Nine and three quarters tall, four and three eighths inches wide. And I okay. will be right back. It does feel weird because I had to cut four pieces of paper just to get that done. If you don't mind these being shorter, you can cut your paper on the eleven inch side at the nine and three quarters. Right? Am I too close now? That's all I got. And then score it on the eight and a half at four and a quarter, but that's gonna make it four and a quarter inches wide, you know, sticking out four and a quarter inches when these are four and three eighths. So you're losing like, you know, um, like an eighth of an inch or so. I mean, it's not that much. Uh, and then you save your paper, right? Cause you're just folding that in half and it works. I was gonna do that and then I changed my mind, so. <laughs> I don't know. Either way, I have all these papers cut already, so we're just going to put these on here. But um, again, if you don't want to and you want to just use two pieces of paper, because I literally had to cut three pieces of paper just to get this done, um, just cut it nine and three quarters and then score it at eight and a quarter. I'm sorry, four and a quarter. And you're just going to be a little bit smaller than the four and three eighths. Um, okay, so, and I'm going to glue these completely together. You know, um, if you want to tuck your pockets in, since we have just sheets like this, if you want your pocket to your pocket, your pocket, <laughs> your pocket to be tucked behind here, you can definitely do that and then add them together. Um, does that make sense? Make the pocket the same way that we discussed earlier with the same, you know, glue tabs. It'll just be tucked in here. You want to leave an opening. You want to leave an opening at the top. You know, for tags or other fun things, whatever it is you want to do. I'm just gonna glue these together because I feel like it, this has been taking a long time. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, for now, plenty of glue, especially on the tab edge, and then just on this very edge. Making sure we're going to have lots of glue there. And then on this one, on the edge that's going to be touching the tab for sure. I'm going to do the same thing for both of them. So I'm going to bring this guy in, put it all the way down to the binding edge as close as I can. And since these are two sheets of paper, instead of just the one folded in half, you know, at this top part, I'm going to make sure that they match up nicely here, in this top edge, before I care about this bottom part. Does that make sense? You know, I want this to be nice and look like one piece of paper as much as I can before I smooth it out over here. And making sure we're level. Again, I used, um, what's this stuff called? Nuvo Deluxe, so it <laughs> firms up pretty quick, but if you want more time, maybe a craft glue. And if you want to use tape runner, go ahead. I just don't feel like tape runner holds up as well over time. Okay, and you guys already seen me do this several times. I'll just massage this and keep it together as much as I can. Pushing that against the tab. Making sure this is all good. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for this one and just hold it onto this tab. Okay, I'll be okay guys, so there it is. The basic binder. We need to, um, you know, decorate the front, do our pockets, and I right now for some reason don't remember how I was doing it before. If I did the outside before I started doing the inside here, so let's pretend that's what we're gonna do, and then we'll do our pockets and things. So on this outside, um, I am going to select some papers. So again, if I, you know, I know people don't like wasting paper, so. 
these pieces that got cut off of that last piece actually will make really nice matte layers. They're like four and an eighth inches wide. So like you can definitely use it for to matte other cards or even cut something down to put in here, you know, whatever. So we have these pieces and I'm not worried about it too much. But if you don't want to do that and just let your paper get cut at nine and three quarters and score it at four and a quarter and pop it in here, it's only going to be literally the smallest amount smaller than this outer piece. So I don't think it's uh, a bother. I think it would be a good thing. Let's see what we have in here, and I'm going to think about what I want to put on the front. And usually I use the same paper from the front to wrap around all the way to the back. I mean, that's pretty. Oh, Ooh, look at this one. This is like perfect match almost. Um, I don't want to be too matchy. Like, this would be nice, but it's a little bit too weird, so no. Um, hmm. You know, I like this. What's a bummer is that the white edge doesn't have, it's not on the top, you know what I'm saying? So unless I use my own whitewash or something to put it on there. Oh, maybe this would be cute as a background paper. Is it too linear? It does feel a little bit linear, doesn't it? Oh, maybe we go with something plain like this. Okay. That's fine. And then we'll add some other stuff. So, um, our papers are nine and three quarters by four and three eighths. Nine and three quarters by four and three eighths. So, to mat that, I'm going to do four and a quarter by nine and five eighths nine and five eighths by four and a quarter okay i'll be right okay. back guys and you know just like i showed you last time this is a 12 inch piece of paper so all i did was cut it at the nine and five eighths in the width this is still 12 inches and then i cut it to the four and a quarter so that's gonna mat there the next one is our spine, if you're using the same paper, if that's what you want to do. Um, and that's going to be, uh, if you recall, it was one and three eighths, right? Since it changed up a, lot, a little bit on us, so one and three eighths. So I'm going to leave it obviously the same height, but I'm going to cut my paper at one and a quarter. So from here, I'm going to cut one and a quarter off. Hold on, let me get that right quick. Hopefully I can do this lined up pretty nice. And if yours did end up one and a quarter, like it's supposed to, if you're using a lighter weight paper, then you would do like one and an eighth or whatever. And then the back one is going to be the same as the front, so I'm just going to cut it at four and a quarter on that width, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I did it all exactly the same, and I'm just going to glue these down. Again, if you want to do, you know what, maybe I'll do, should I do a little sewing? Sew around the edge? Let me do a little sewing around this edge, and I will be right back. crazy guys that other machine just went pop and it stopped working so I brought out my little sinker <laughs> stitch so quick too this thing um, has a lot of views on my channel as far as a review and so does the handheld one the other weird one that just does its own thing this one actually does a lock stitch whatever they call it uh, but anyway okay so now I have the hut and I'm just gonna glue these down guys so I'm just gonna glue this down yeah the other one just went pop and said forget it which was kind of funny um, yeah, actually it goes this way. Just put glue and glue it down. Same thing with the back piece and this uh, side. So I have those all in there. Um, we're going to put in our closure before I add the pocket because I think my pocket's going to be a little bit high. So as far as that goes, I'm going to add that in. Um, I am going to add it between all these things. I could have just done it on this top layer, but I didn't want it to rip away later. Like I'd rather have it anchoring these two together um yeah and we'll go from there so let me clean up a little bit and i'm also in the meantime going to cut the two pockets for the outside these pockets on the front and back cover so again six and three quarters by five and seven eighths i'm going to cut two of those okay and i'll be right back i have all my little snap stuff in here um this is that set i picked up from amazon these uh, pieces and then this one I had picked up at Hobby Lobby, but it's a way better price on Amazon. So whatever it is you want to use, but I think I'm going to use this pink. Eh, it's okay. Uh, but you need two of these, right? They basically look the same. Unless you have decorative ones, then you might have like a heart or some shape. And then you need one that looks like this, and then the one that looks like this. Because <laughs> they snap together. If I snap them together right now, I probably won't be able to take them apart, because there's nothing <laughs> helping me do that. Let me move these to the side. 
So each one of these guys is going to have something like that. Now it's up to you. Do you want this part facing up? Or which side do you want, basically? So this is going to be on the outside of our book. That's what you're going to see. Actually, you're going to see on the inside. So do you want it to be the part that receives the thing? Or do you want it to be the part that has the little pop-up? I have a feeling it needs to be this one. I don't know. I feel like I need to use that one for this. Okay, so that's going to be that. This is going to be our for our latch, which I'm not going to do yet. <laughs> so I'm going to put that to the side for now. And what I need from this guy... Why I always keep the things in the same storage or the way they showed up? I don't know. But <laughs> here we go. And... So I wanted my pocket to be six inches high, huh? Let me see. So it's going to be all the way up to here. Yeah, it doesn't really matter because it's not going to interfere with the pocket that much. Maybe a little bit. And I'm just eyeballing this. Where do I want this to be? On the front here. Maybe down here in the center? Ish? Okay. I am totally eyeballing that. Okay. And this thing needs to come up here. And this one goes on this side. Okay, and all this tool, all it does is it smashes that little plastic. This little plastic thing that's sticking up gets smashed like a mushroom, basically. <laughs> and that's what holds this in. So, let me take that off. And if I remember this portion, and if it was the one from Amazon, same thing. That portion that's cupped or curved is going to hold to this guy. Now, you can give it a squish if you want, but I'm just going to make sure that's on there. Make sure that's there and give it a really 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 good press and hopefully I pressed it hard enough to hold on and I don't know if you can see it, it gets smashed down that's all that happens and that's what holds it on so that's going to be my little latch once I do bring the latch over it's a little lower than I was thinking of placing it um, and then I have my pieces so let me put these things away I guess and we'll do the pockets so on the six and three quarters side we did six and three quarters by five and seven eighths the five and seven eighths is the width plus you know everything else that we're going to cut away from it the six and three quarter is the height so on one of the six and three quarter inch links I'm going to do a half inch glue tab so half inch and then we're going to do a quarter inch from there so three quarters of an inch okay and on the opposite side, the skinnier, the 5 and 7 8 side, we are going to do the same thing. So half inch glue tab, quarter inch space. So half inch, three quarter inch. Same thing on the other side. And again, you can make these up however you like. Half inch, three quarter inch. Um, you know, you could have made these a little bit skinnier. Well, not too much skinnier, but maybe shorter. And then that way you can get two from one piece of paper. This number right here makes it so you have to take this piece from two different pieces of paper. So that's one thing I've noticed so far with, uh, you know, I just kind of working on this is that a lot of it is not working out as far as the numbers uh, go. But either way, okay, for paper conservation, I'm going to cut this away here. So right on that second score line and this one too. And again, I leave these completely intact, but I will etch out like to that first score line on this here, the half inch score line. Same thing with this one. And over here, cut off that same bit right up to the second score line. And right to the first one, notch it out. And that is going to be our first pocket. Really tall. This is completely different than what I thought we would be doing or like working on it. It's kind of interesting. So there's that. And there's my quarter inch. I'm going to do the same thing for the other one. We're going to score all these guys. If you want to cut in a little divot hole or some kind of decoration, you want to do some punching on the top, you know, we have plenty of, of room with this one because I made it really high. You can definitely take a decorative punch and punch it all off the top here and it'll have some cute like decoration there. But for now, this is the pocket we just created that's going to hold our card bases. Now, again, the card bases are a lot skinnier. I mean, this is how I do it, right? Three and a half. But if you have a, you know, an Adam Griffin one that's more like four inches, then you're going to have it, it's going to stick out to like over here, right? So we made this book, like book big enough to accommodate all that, plus of course your envelopes. So, you know, it just depends on your numbers what this might end up looking like. Uh, I'm going to put this over here. I do like keeping the small tab on the inside. Or it can go to the back. Actually, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is, if you want this back here, 
that might be better just we're going to cover that up with paper anyway uh, and I like to do this all at once so I'm going to put glue all the way up here on there all on this tab and I'm going to do the exact same thing through it for the back same measurements that's what we already cut the two and just keeping that completely covered with glue and I should have made these things I thought, oh, this is going to be fast, but I said that a lot. I'm telling you, I, I'm always, I don't know what I'm thinking. Okay, so I'm just placing that right at the bottom and right up to the sides and just making sure my little pocket is still a pocket. And as I work with it, I'm looking at this edge here that it comes right to basically the edge when it closes that it doesn't interfere. So I'm checking that out. I'm checking out how close to the very bottom I have this. That one wants to stick before I want it, right here. See that? Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm just trying to get it right to the edge on all edges. Open a little bit there and that's okay. Okay, and I'm making sure that this book will close. So that's okay. And then I can open it up. And I can take like my ruler and just put it in there, making sure it's still flat, still on that edge. Holding that down, looks good. I'm kind of doing that bottom edge and doing this also. This is so interesting because this one's so much longer than the other ones. It's like, okay, I want to make sure I'm getting in there. I can see what I'm doing. Oh, yeah. So what's making this bump up a little bit is the, um, the snap. So I will keep an eye out for that, and I will actually really put my finger on that area. And that looks good. This looks good. This one's nice and flat, and before it really sticks, again, I'll just check to make sure we can close our book and there's not like a problem with that. Looking good. Down here, there's a little bit of opening right there where I'd rather have it a little bit more closed up, but that's okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, there we go. Just trying to line that up better. Okay. I'm going to keep holding it and I'm going to do the exact same thing with the back one, but the one in the back isn't going to have a snap. I'm going to just glue the strap to the outside so I don't need to put another snap over here. That wouldn't make sense. So I'm going to do this one exact same way I did this one and attach it to the back. Once they start coming together, I am just so smitten with these. It's so cute. Like when I put it up and I'm like, aww, <laughs> the little pockets there. It just looks so nice. Like honestly, uh, I have to go pick up Dorian in a bit and I'm like, good, I need a break because... It was a little bit stressing me out. I just don't like wasting the paper, right? Like the way the cuts are. But that's just because of the size that I'm making it. You do not have to make it this big. Um, you know, really size it to your envelopes and you'll be, I think, happy. And you'll probably have a better go at, you know, conserving some of your paper. Um, for me, like I said, I wanted to design it for these guys. So let's say... Ew, these are really weak. But okay, let's do five cards. So if we have five envelopes pop them in here well we also need to mat this but look at that so it fits these guys right that's what I designed it for and then everything else that's going to be this kind of card base it's gonna be smaller but they're gonna they're gonna tuck in here and that's fine and then we need our pockets and look at that oh you guys it's shaping up it is shaping up okay uh, let me let this glue dry and in the meantime we also need the pockets for these areas I think I'll do full pockets here and this one so one two three full pockets and back here maybe we'll do something playful again so um, I need three pieces of paper that are five and a half by five and three eighths right does that seem right five and three eighths oh yeah yeah duh because this one had the extra way more extra uh yeah we just need the inch more than the four and three eighths so five and three eighths by five and a half so and i'll be ready on this one the five and a half obviously on 11 inch you can get the five and a half from here so i'm just going to cut it all together at five and three eighths five and three eighths and then we can do the five and a half in the other direction and we have those i just need to get one more Okay, and for this one, on the five and three eighths, which is just smaller than the other, this is not quite a square, the five and a half. On the five and three eighths side, we need to score a half inch on either side, half inch, half inch. And then on the five and a half, 
we're just scoring at half inch. And again, I just made up those numbers. You can do whatever you want. So for here, um, what I'm going to do is divot out the square. See how there's like a little square here? I am so sorry. This lighting, I have it dark even, and it still is super bright. <laughs> I don't know. Like, this paper doesn't even look pink. It looks white. I have to really play with that because, I don't know. It's just uh, kind of weird. Oh, okay. So, with this one, all I'm going to do is fold on these edges here. And then this guy. And again, if you want this little tab before. And you don't have to do I glue it all down at once just because um, it's called laziness. But if you guys want to put glue here first, glue that tab down. And then put glue on the sides and then bring it down. Go for it. But I just do it all at once. And I'm going to uh, do the same thing for all three pockets. Just putting glue again all on those sides. Really want these to stay in place and not be bothersome. We are going to cover these with matte layers, so this is just like a basic thing. But you want your good construction, of course. When I open this up, I'm just going to put down that bottom tab. Actually, I can feel that they're being funny. Okay and then push this down come on buddies there we go and I'm just putting that on this first page right <laughs> this first one just keeping it even on the bottom and really even on the side and if you can see we have that half inch gap which is really great okay I have glue all over my fingers but again it's because I'm being a little extra and trying to get this done all at once. So I always push, push, push. Again, get your ruler if you need to. Kind of slide it in there. Make sure everything's making good contact. And then I move on to the other one. If I had the other one ready, I would actually do it right now because at the same time you can squeeze both of them together, right? When you have this one on this side, you can squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. <laughs> and you're killing two birds with one stone, which is a horrible saying. <laughs> Anyway, all right, uh, I'm going to do the exact same uh, on this pocket and on this pocket, and wow. I'll be back. So this is interesting. It wasn't as easy to put these in. Like, this one's doing okay, but this second one, um, just because of the, the height, the length, and then how tight it is, you know, to get in there, because it's just skinny. <laughs> uh, very interesting. But this is a good place for me to take a break. i got to go pick up Dorian anyway, so look at that, you guys. So we just made our pockets, and... We have our back pocket, our front pocket, all these little pockets, and then we're going to mat and layer them. So I will be back to do that. And again, you know, we're just going to take into account, okay, how big is this? What kind of mat do we want for that? Okay, and what we're going to tuck in here. And I am going to let it tuck all the way down to the bottom just so that it's easy to put things in and out because of the, you know, the, ta the glue tabs kind of get in the way sometimes. So I like to mat the whole thing. And I learned my lesson with my A2 one. I was like, ah, well, all I have to do is cover it up a little bit. But you know what? It is nicer to bring the mat all the way down in there if you want to. You don't have to do that, of course. Okay, guys. Um, I will be back. Aw. Okay, I'm not sure I was. I took a long break. But I did go ahead and measure these pockets. So we're going to have to um, mat them if you want to. I guess you could leave them just like this. But that's our base. Um book so cute okay so I went ahead and measured these all of these long you know these pockets that go in here the long the pages themselves are um, you know four and three eighths by nine and three quarters so I'm gonna mat them four and a quarter by nine and five eighths so everything that I cut to go in here is four and a quarter by nine and five eighths okay and that's just an eighth of an inch smaller all around um, the big pockets the outer pockets these guys are going to have mats that are four and a quarter by five and seven eighths because these are four and three eighths by six basically so an eighth inch smaller is a four and a quarter by five and seven eighths for both of these pockets i'm going to cut mat pieces and then these little guys these three pockets are i need mats that are four and a quarter by four and seven eighths so as you can see a lot of things are four and a quarter so that's great and they're just going to be different heights um, because this was four and three eighths by five, so I'm gonna cut a mat four and a quarter by four and seven eighths, and I think I'm gonna make them match this time. The last couple times I just do whatever I want on each page. Like I treat this as a different page than this, so the pocket was a different mat than the inside. So since I have twelve by twelve paper, 
I'm collecting all the pieces of pink paper that I still have. Actually, it's not even all of them. They're over here. So this is all the extra paper that I had to cut, you know? So, but like I said, there's plenty here. I think I'll probably cut some for the die cuts and stuff like that. Um, and we need something for the strap, too. So I'm just going to go through and, you know, find paper that I like. Maybe this will be like a bottom pocket since I don't want to cover up all that foiling. Maybe that will be a background pocket. Ooh, this is so pretty. I definitely want to use this paper. Um, I wouldn't use this one because the whole thing would be covered unless I use it for a bottom pocket area. Which might be great. And we have this one. Something like this. This would be great for a background piece. So I'm just going to make my selections. And like I said, maybe... I'll show you right quick what I'm thinking. There's only two of each, and I think I only have one of this paper pad. I might have two, but I feel like I only have one. So... Like the paper definitely has a direction where I pay attention to that. So let's say like for this pocket here, four and a quarter by four and seven eighths, I want four and a quarter by five and seven eighths. And this paper does have what I would consider a direction. Now I just said I was going to match them up, but maybe it's better if this was different from this. So that's, it's not noticeable that this is the same as this pocket. Hmm. Let's think about these guys. Okay. So four and a quarter by four and seven eighths. The four and seven eighths is the height. The four and a quarter is the width. I'm trying to think if I should just cut a little bit off of here. That way I have this whole paper instead of cutting the whole bottom. You know, that's when you can start thinking about conserving your paper. So again, the width needs to be four and a quarter. So I am going to cut it this way. Because if I cut the whole bottom off, now I've made it so that this 12 by 12 piece over here, like the 12 inch length, isn't going to work for us. So four and a quarter by four and seven eighths. So I have one there. And four and seven eighths. So I have still this little piece. I don't know if I have to use it, but for this one I have my pockets, my pocket layers. Okay. So I'm going to glue those two in like that. And in the background here I'll use this pretty paper. And again, these need to be cut at four and a quarter by nine and five eighths. So this one is longer, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but I can still, you know, four and a quarter, four and a quarter. And then from there, actually four and a quarter, four and a quarter is eight and a half. So let's do that. I'm going to cut eight and a half in this direction first. Eight and a half. And I'll tell you why I'm doing that way first. That way I have this whole piece. And when I cut the 9 and 5 eighths, I'll have another piece that's complete instead of being cut in two. 9 and 5 eighths is just over. So now I have these two pieces I can still use, right? This strip, possibly. And now I'll cut these to 4 and a quarter. We don't have a lot of matte layering this time. Oh, this might even be my strap piece. Look, <laughs> I need something that goes around here to buckle to the front. So that's good. Okay. And these guys, I will slide in here as best I can once I put glue. Right? Slide, slide, slide. Slide, slide, slide. <laughs> and then that will be glued in there. Just like that. Okay, so just like I've done in the past videos. If you wanted to notch those out, you would have notched out this first. It depends on your paper cutter, I guess. Actually, do I have a perfect... That's interesting. Oh, you know why? Because I did it this way, huh? <laughs> I was say, if there's an area that's cut off that matches the other one, I'll put it down that way, but there was not. Okay, so... Just put glue on this. Put glue on your hand, for sure. <laughs> And I will take my time to glue that in. This is so funny, just because it is a funky size, you know, it's weird. Um, I have to kind of work with it. Okay, and I'll glue the one on the other side. And honestly, after I already tuck this in, if I don't want to pull it out, I can just uh, put glue on the back of this and stick it down. It's not going to do anything down at the bottom, but if you want to pull it back out, put glue all over the back, of course, and then slide it back in. Right? Well, anyway. You just bring this back out. <laughs> Put glue all over. And I know this is not going to be pretty while I work on it and shim it in there. But um, 
let me see. I think I need to trim this one down just a little bit because it looks like just to give it a better look as far as the mat goes. And you can do that because you know this is handmade, so one of your pockets might be tighter than the next, whatever. It just didn't wasn't so much the pocket. It looked like it was over to the the right a little too much. And take this guy. Get it in the pocket, of course. Slide, slide, slide. Slide in, slide in. And the last thing that might be a little bit of a problem for you at the very bottom is the um, that little bump, right, from when we made our pocket. That might get in your way, but this time it didn't, so there it is. Okay, and I'll do the same thing for all of them, you guys. I am going to trim this a little bit before I stick it down because I can see that. It, the glue probably dried. You know what? I think I'm going to use the craft glue on the other ones. The glue dried before I could really push it in there. You know what I'm saying? It's set up like it grabbed on. So I am going to trim this a little bit before I really put it down here. This will have to be very careful. It is just the slightest amount. Just so I have a, a mat and it's not right up to the top. that matte piece. Okay, and I'll do the same for this one and for this, well for this one we're just going to put a whole piece of paper because I don't know what I'm going to do with the pockets yet. Um, so maybe I'll hold off on this one. But for everybody else we're doing the same thing. Four and a quarter by five and seven eighths matte paper. The papers that go in the back are four and a quarter by nine and five eighths, four and a quarter by four and seven eighths on these little guys. Okay, I'm just going to adhere these and like I said I'm going to use a craft glue so I can still move it. Um, since it's so long, it's just it's harder to control, right? The other ones were pretty easy. I can just pop them in there and have a good idea. This guy's so long and the glue's touching the whole way and once it holds, you're not going to move it anymore. <laughs> so let's put this guy away and I'll be back. I just want to check in with you guys. Definitely a better go with the craft glue. Like this one, I slid it in. It was too far to the left and I was able to just kind of shimmy it over to the right and then it went all the way down. I didn't have to do anything with this one. It got stuck, right? So I had to like trim that piece, but this time it went down perfectly and look at that. So definitely on this project, at least for these inside inserts, when you're really tucking them in there, uh, maybe use a craft glue so you have a little more um, manipulation time or something like your beacons or your zip dry or uh, those call all like the the yeah the call all tacky glue something like that something that gives you a little time to kind of move it okay anyway I'll be back <laughs> papers like on this one I told you guys I might do something different but look at this paper so I think what I'm gonna do is cut it down so this mats on this pocket and then this creamy part from over here so it'll just have like that but it'll still coordinate and this has like the empty space I think that'll be pretty so I'm gonna cut those down and I'll be back. you know I think for today I'm going to leave it here because that way I can get the edit video edited and have it actually go out on Wednesday. I had to take such a long break and I know in that break time I offloaded the video that was on my card and it was already about an hour <laughs> and then I came back and did the matte layers. So when we come back um, part two I will um, finish the uh, latch of course but um, we'll have these guys glued down. I was just kind of playing with it right now. Finished. Uh, I'll have all the matte layers in. And on this one, I'm not sure if I'll have a matte layer there, um, but I know the part two is usually like 20 or 30 minutes, so that you know I'll just add whatever pocket or pockets I want to do here, and I'll have this matted up, okay? So I'm not gonna have any pictures because we're not quite done yet, but um, but that's all I'm gonna do. Let's just finish matting this up, and um, and we'll be back for part two, which is usually cutting the items that we're gonna store in here. So. Again, I'll have my card bases I'm going to pop in here. We already have envelopes that we're going to have in here. And then we're just going to cut some die cut pieces and whatever else that we want to add in, okay? And finish that up. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.